All right, let's get started. Uh, some housekeeping. We will be sending the presentation slides and recording around after the webinar is finished. The phones are muted during this webinar, but feel free to ask questions in the question pane on your right. Um, our support specialist, Shane, is waiting for your questions. Um, we do ask that if you have any very specific questions about us, something very particular related, related to your cited by matches that you send a ticket to our support staff at support at crossrock.org instead, just because we do tend to get a lot of questions during these sorts of webinars. Um, and we'll also try to answer some questions at the end through that panel, depending on the time available. This webinar will give you an overview of how to implement our cited by service. Our cited by service alerts members to what items within the Crossref database are citing their content. So how does this work? A publisher registers an article with Crossref and includes the reference list for that article in their metadata record. When the references are registered, the Crossref system tries to find a matching record and DOI in our system for each reference. We make that information available to the publisher of the reference DOI if they've signed up for our cited by service. This way, Crossref members are able to identify who within the Crossref community is citing their content. Today, I'm going to talk to you about how to deposit your references, how to look up citing matches, how we make these matches, and what data is available to you as part of this service. So before we get started with all of that, I do want to note that the first step to implementing the cited by service is to sign up. It's a free service, but we do require members to contact us before you begin retrieving your cited by matches. Um, so before we switch on your querying capabilities. This is so we can track who is participating and make you aware of your obligations. So to sign up, send an email to member at crossref.org and say you want to participate in our cited by service. Um, and be sure to identify who you are so we know who to switch on. <laughs> so when you sign up for cited by, your main obligation is to deposit your references. We ask that you deposit references for current journal content, but encourage you to send us your references for back content and for other content types, such as books and conference proceedings. Every reference you deposit with us is a potential citing match. Other cited by participants can retrieve and display that match with their content, which will in turn drive traffic to your content. So we have two channels for depositing references. Uh, the first is our simple text query form. This is a user interface that can be used to look up DOI matches for citations within a reference list, and you can also use this form to deposit those matches with us. You can also submit your references using XML. This is the primary method uh, most of our members use. Um, you can either include them in your content registration XML, or they can be submitted on their own and added to an existing metadata record. And we'll go through how to do each option briefly. So first step, if you're new to our simple text query form, you do need to register an email address for usage. This is a little backwards, as you'll also need to provide a separate set of credentials later in the process. This form is used heavily by authors and end users to populate reference lists with DOIs and the deposit function has been added on to accommodate the need for non-XML reference depositing. Um, the lookup portion of this form is, it's not hooked up to our overall system, so you can't use the same login you use to deposit DOIs to do your initial reference lookup. Um, we hope to provide a better workflow in the future, but for now we're, we're requiring this extra validation. Once you've registered your email address, enter the registered email into the registered email field and cut and paste your reference list into the box and select submit. And you'll see your reference list with the DOIs included. Um, at the bottom, you'll see the deposit button. Go ahead and select this and you'll be prompted to enter some more details. You'll need to, and this is very important, enter the DOI of the article you are depositing references for in the parent DOI box. Um, and note it that a metadata record must be registered before you can add references to it um, using this form. 
Um, you also will need to enter the username and password you use to register your content, as well as the email address you want your logs sent to. Uh, then you'll just click deposit and your references will be sent off for processing. And so as with everything you send to us, all of the content registration files you send to us, um, you need to verify that the deposit was successful. Um, if you use this method, you'll get an email verifying that the references were added to your metadata record or telling you that, nope, that didn't happen. Um, so you do need to review the log to make sure your attempt was successful. Um, these deposits rarely fail since we're generating the XML, but it can happen. I'd say the most common issue with this forum is if you're submitting a reference list for a DOI that has not been registered yet. Um, we're not able to add those references to the DOI because we don't have that record, so we just flat out reject your, your submission attempt. So you can also deposit references as part of the XML you send us to register your content. This is the most common method for registering your references. References can be deposited as marked up metadata. Our metadata deposit schema has some spe specifications for citations. Um, we collect basic bibliographic data, such as journal title, book title, author names, page numbers, volume issues, numbers, dates, um, all that good stuff. Um, you can also submit a citation as just a DOI, if you know what the DOI is. Um, we will then use that DOI to retrieve the metadata registered with us for that item. You can also send in unformatted citations. You can do this if you're not able to mark up your references. It can be a little tricky. Um, so we will use some reference parsing technology to break the references up into parts wherever we can. And I'd say the most accurate reference will include a DOI as when you send that to us, we're easily able to match that reference to a metadata record for obvious reasons. Um, if you don't have the DOIs, and a lot of you don't, uh, we recommend that your references be submitted as marked up XML, as we're able to make very good matches that way. Um, and of course, unstructured citations are great. Um, they're not as forgiving. It's not easy to pull out the relevant fields from a mass of text. So while the results are good, they're not as good as if you explicitly tell us what is in each citation. We can usually match well-formatted journal and book references, but we aren't as successful with messy data or unconventional citations. Here is an example of a marked up citation. Uh, note that it has some basic bibliographic metadata that I mentioned before, journal title, author, verse page, volume, um, year. Um, this example also has a DOI included. Um, here's as I mentioned, you can also submit just the DOI. Uh, if the DOI is registered with Crossref, um, so we, so we will already have the metadata for that DOI, so you don't really need to provide it. Um, and then here's also an example of an unstructured citation, which is your typical formatted reference. In this case, the depositor wasn't able to break it into parts, so we'll do our best on our end to break it up instead. You, of course, don't need to limit yourself to one method within a reference list. Uh, most members mark up references and include DOIs as they are able and capture the remaining citations in, as unstructured citations. So when you register your references, we take each citation in your reference list and try to find a match for it in our database. If we find a match, great. We'll display that match in your submission log. You can also retrieve that matches the matches using an API. Um, we also make that match available to the member who is respons responsible for the matched item. So that's really how the magic of our cited by service happens. So if that member is a cited by participant, they can retrieve that match and make it available on their website. So this means that cited by matches are made when a citing item is registered with references. If an article has a DOI, that doesn't necessarily mean the references have been deposited. Um, that's, um, I just wanna stress that point because it, it does cause some confusion with, with, within some members. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about how we match 
a DOI to a citation, it really hinges on metadata quality and timing. When a member deposits a reference list, we check at that point to see if a matching record is available for each citation. If a record hasn't been registered for a citation, we can't make a match, obviously. If an article is deposited before, before the citation to that article is deposited, we'll make that match provided the metadata is decent on both sides. In this example, you can see that the author name in the citation deposit on the right is Nichols RJ, but the author surname on the left is Nichols, which that's a very minor inconsistency and we can usually work with that, um, particularly if other pieces of metadata are present. So we'd mostly li likely make a match for this item because the journal title volume and year being deposited are consistent. Um, if there was another au article authored by a Nichols in that volume, we wouldn't be able to make a match. Here's another example. Um, the author, again, aren't, isn't a perfect match and there is no page registered for this article and the journal title abbreviation is kind of ambiguous. There's a lot of uh, philosophical transactions uh, titles. Um, so we won't be able to make a confident match for this item given the inconsistencies between the article and the citation metadata. Uh, someone looking at that might be able to figure out what it's citing, but um, the on our end, our, our machines aren't able to confidently say, okay, this is the perfect match. So in the third example, the author name is consistent, as is the other metadata. It's very specific, so we can make a match confidently here. So the more solid references we have, the more matches you and other members of our community will have. When a match in a reference deposit is made, we make that match available to the member responsible for the match. Um, DOI as a cited by match, and now I'm going to tell you how to get your cited by matches. Um, we have a few methods that will give you your matches. They all work a bit differently, so you can choose one that fits your needs. The common and long standing method of retrieving cited by links is to submit cited by query XML using the Crossref's query schema. The query contains only the DOI of the cited article stored in the FL query element. Um, within this XML, if you set the alert flag to true, your query will be stored in our system and we'll send you an email alert if we find a new match in the future. So if a new article is registered with us and that is citing this DOI, we'll, we'll send you that match when that item is registered. As with other types of XML queries, um, this XML can be posted to our system for asynchronous pr processing or it can be sent as an HTTPS request. We also have an API that can be used to retrieve matches on a larger scale. Um, we're finding a lot of members are, prefer the API to the XML querying. Uh, you can retrieve all matches for a single DOI or a prefix within a date range. You can also um, retrieve results for a single DOI on a single day. Um, this is useful if you want to update your citations as users access a DOI landing page, for example, so you want to update something on the fly, or if you want to update all matches for your prefix daily. Uh, this, these APIs work fairly well. If you have a lot of cited by matches, you might have timeout problems, so we have another API that will work uh, if you're kind of a high volume matcher. Uh, I'll get to that in a second. The results of your cited by query will be presented as XML. The result, these results are consistent for both the query API and the XML option, um, and the results use our query output 2.0 schema. Um, there's more information on that in our support documentation. We don't give you a full metadata record, but the metadata delivery, delivered to you will include the DOI that has been cited, the DOI that is doing the citing, and uh, some of the, the basic bibliographic metadata that you need to construct a citation. Um, so a journal article match would include the items listed here. We also have an OAI PMH method that may be used to harvest matches for a prefix or a given title. The OAI PMH results give you DOIs only. Um, this method is very efficient 
uh, but if you need want the metadata and the DOIs delivered in one go, uh, it's not the best option. Uh, but some members do prefer just to get the DOIs, then, then they then do a second query to retrieve the DOI match metadata. Uh, we have a number of options for DOI to metadata queries. Um, they're, they're fairly robust and quick. Um, so this is a, the OAI PMH harvesting method for matches is a solid option if you want to retrieve matches for a single title. If you have a lot of matches. We have some members who will have maybe thousands of matches a day and find the other APIs timeout or just take a long time to respond. The OAI PMH method allows you to retrieve a limited set of results and then send in a resumption token to query for the next set of results. So you don't really have to worry about time, timeouts or um, take that into consideration when querying. I also wanted to mention how we handle cited by matches for our newest content type. Uh, our newest content type is, it's officially called posted content, but that encompasses preprints and other preprint like objects, which you may or may not want in your cited by results. So instead of including them and have you filter them out, we decided by default, we won't give you the matches from preprints that cite your content. You can opt to include those results by include, including an include posted content parameter in your query as shown in this example. You would include that in your um, HTTP queries or in the XML you use to query. We're often asked why the crossref cited by count is different than the number the cited by count identified by Google Scholar or Thomson Reuters. Um, the reason why it's, it's, it's pretty simple. We only match among crossref members who have registered references. So it's a, it's a smaller pool, but it's very de dependable. Um, you can uh, kind of trust, trust these matches within the crossref community. Um, if an expected match is not made between participating members, there are three basic reasons why. Um, the first most common reason is that references for the citing item have not been registered. Uh, this may be because of a delay on the part of the content owner, or the maybe that uh, member hasn't registered references for back content, or maybe something went wrong when they submitted their references and they had a, haven't got, had a chance to correct that issue. Um, but I'd say that's maybe the most common reason we find why a cited by match hasn't has been made. We just don't have the data for it. Um, another reason is that the reference was registered, but the data in the reference is incorrect or it's insufficient. And we aren't able to make a match. And that can happen the other way too. Maybe the metadata for the cited DOI is incorrect or insufficient. Um, we often see cases where a publisher will register a DOI um, ahead of print, for example, they'll send something in and they won't include issue numbers or the final publication date. And when that item's published, and that's kind of the official citation metadata, uh, we don't have that official citation metadata, so we can't link up that item with anything that's citing it because we just don't have enough information about that item to make that call. So our best practices for cited by are to update your matches regularly. It's not a one-time update kind of thing. You really do want to keep this information up to date. Uh, cited by counts usually only go up. Uh, we do recommend adding references to your back content and books. Uh, most members, when they join the service, focus on current content while they're getting started, but then apply it cited, the cited by um, service to older, older content as well. We also want you to share your matches on your website. Um, our cited by service provides you with the data, but we don't currently have any widgets or provide support for importing the data into your website. We recommend that you display the matches on article pages so that readers can see who is citing your content. Um, most landing pages feature a cited by crossref option prominently, as you see here. 
And of course, they'll also display the matches once you drill down into that. Um, the matches are usually formatted as citations. And as you see here, the citations each link to the Crossref DOI for the item. So this will send traffic to the citing member's content. Some other things to know before we wrap up. We are providing data to help you get a complete picture of how your content is cited within the Crossref's community, but we don't provide any metrics. We just give you the data and you interpret it on your end. Um, again, we don't provide tools or support for displaying the matches on your website. And I do want to reemphasize that we only ma make matches between items in our database. It, it's just, it's a very common point of confusion. Again, we'll be sending the slides and recording around post-webinar, and we will continue to answer any questions you've submitted through the questions pane. Uh, if anything else pops into your mind, feel free to contact support at crossref.org if you need any additional help. And thanks for joining us today. I hope if you're participating in the service, this has been useful. And if you're getting started, I hope this points you in the right direction. <laughs>